AI assisted IDEs like Cursor and Winsor are amazing for wipe coding, but for the most part, they still need human in the loop. But now we are seeing a new category of AI coding agents that are emerging. This include tools like Cloud Code, Codex, and Jules, which can do coding tasks autonomously and asynchronously. There's a new addition in this category, and this tool is called Warp. Warp can be categorized as agent development environment. It provides very similar functionality to Cloud Code and can work with large code bases. In this video, I'll show you a practical example of how to implement a new contextual retrieval feature in local GPT using Warp's agent. They are also the sponsor of today's video, but the tool itself is pretty amazing. So let's get started. Here's the interface when you load Warp for the first time. Now it looks just like a terminal, but I'm going to show you how to implement new features in a large code base using Warp's agent development environment. But first, let me show you some of the features or options that are available. The first one is it has a large selection of latest large language models, but I like to use it in auto mode because the agent gets to decide which model to use based on the complexity of the task. You can also attach images, connect GitHub repos. It has voice input, which is pretty neat. And then if you want, you can use it in a normal terminal mode, or you can use auto detection, which will switch between agent mode and normal terminal. For example, if I type a bash command like this, it will run the bash command for me. Now, if I run ls, again, it will execute the bash command. But if I use the voice input mode and provide a voice command in natural language, then it's going to automatically change to the agent mode. Let me show you an example. Can you list all the items in this folder and order them by their size? Okay, so took our natural language query and transcribed it. Now, if I run this, you're going to see that it's going to use the agent to first generate a query or a bash command to run. So here are the results of the bash command. And then it's using the large language model to analyze the results and give us a really nice details of what exactly is in the folder ordered by the size. This is pretty neat. You don't need to remember any of the bash commands anymore. You can just interact with your terminal in natural language. The beauty of Warp is its agent development environment. In the rest of the video, I'm going to use the agent to interact with my local GPT code base. This is my own personal project, which has over 20,000 stars. Now it's been a while since I updated the code base and I want to use Warp's agent to implement new features. Specifically, I want it to implement this contextual retrieval technique from Anthropic. First, I'm going to ask the agent to clone this repo, analyze the contents of the repo, get its own understanding of what exactly is in the repo, and set up the virtual environment to run the project. And then later in the video, we're going to ask it to implement this new feature. I'm going to ask the agent to clone the repo into a GitHub folder. And we're going to let the agent do everything. So it generated the command. Specifically, I wanted to name the folder local GPT contextual. So it's able to do that. By default, it's going to ask you to run each command manually, which is really great, especially if you are not running this within a sandbox, but you can enable auto execution, which is also pretty neat. It only cloned the repo so far. I'm going to ask it to set up local GPT on my machine and let's auto approve everything. So first it moves to the directory. Then it's looking at the readme file to read the instructions. Again, I only provided the code base and now it's automatically figuring out how to run this specific project on my local machine, which is pretty awesome. I think it ran into some issues here. So it tried to change the directory but I think it already was there. So now it's recovering from it. Seems like it is creating a virtual environment now and downloading all the packages. So you can see here it created the virtual environment for it. Now it's running the command. So it activated the virtual environment. 
and now it's installing all the dependencies. So it's really a crazy to see, right? The agent is able to read the readme file, follow all the instructions, install all the dependencies. Pretty awesome stuff. One more thing, local GPT is a little tricky to install because you have to install different versions of Llama CPP depending on the operating system that you are using. It is reading through the readme and since I'm running this on Mac OS, I decided to use that specific version for Apple Silicon, which is pretty neat. Let me show you some very interesting things that the coding agent did here. The first thing is that by default, local GPT uses Llama 3.8 billion, but we're using the official meta version, which is a gated model. So you need to give your hugging face account permission to access that. But the warp agent decided to use quantized version, which is not gated. And since I'm using this on Apple Silicon, so this quantized version is going to run better, which is pretty interesting that the model or agent decided that. And then following the instructions, it looked at the source documents folder. There is an example document. So then it went ahead, activated the virtual environment. After that, it ran the ingestion pipeline, which was very interesting. And throughout the process, the agent is actually keeping track of the steps that it has taken, what the output looks like. For example, here it's checking for whether the vector store was created or not. Now it ran into an issue where it's not able to load a specific function, but it seems like it's able to recover from that. And then it created this guide for us on how to run the setup again. And it also created this helpful bash script that you can use to run local GPT. Okay, but now I want to run the retrieval pipeline so that I can ask questions based on the documents that I have provided. Let's see if it can figure that out. So next I asked it, how do I run the retrieval pipeline? And it figured out how to run the retrieval pipeline. And I was specifically asking for document sources. So it also is using that specific flag. So it's actually looking at the code base. So we're going to run this and let's wait for it to load the model. Local GPT comes with this paper by default as a source document, but you can bring your own, own documents and chat with those. Okay, so here's one question, the model generated answers. And it also cited specific chunks from the documents that we have provided. So everything seems to be working. The quality of output is going to be dependent on the model the local GPT is using. Now we want to implement this contextual retrieval feature within local GPT. And the idea is that with every chunk, we're going to append a summary of the surrounding chunks. Now, Contextual Retrieval will use the whole document to create that summary, but I want to implement a sliding window approach, which will only consider a specific chunks around a given chunk rather than the whole document when it's creating the summary. Okay, so here's the prompt that we're going to be using. I'm going to ask you to implement Contextual Retrieval during the chunking process. And I provided the documentation. So it's going to use its web search tool to actually retrieve the contents of this web link and understand it. But we want a variation of the proposed method. So instead of the whole document uh, for generating the contextual summary of a given chunk, I want you to use only the current two chunks. I'm going to say the surrounding two chunks for each chunk. The sliding window approach will reduce latency and will also ensure that the summary is relevant to the current chunk. So first the agent has to go figure out what this article is about, then figure out where exactly to implement those changes and then implement the changes. It wrote a whole new module in order to implement the contextual retrieval method. And the implementation seems to be correct based on the web link that we provided. So here's the prompt that it's going to be using. It's going to take the surrounding chunks plus the text chunks and then pass this through an LLM to generate a summary. So I'm going to apply the changes and now it's bringing all the changes to the main ingestion pipeline. So you can actually see the diff that it imported that new module it created. And it's going to be using this new module during the chunking process now. Okay, so it brought those changes. Now, in this case, I am manually approving everything, but we can enable auto approval and the agent will automatically approve the tasks and keep on going. But right now I just want to have a lot more control in seeing what exactly it's doing. 
And this was the main change. So if contextual retrieval is enabled, then it's going to pass each chunk plus the a window around it to our new module that we created. It created a readme on how to run this new contextual retrieval implementation. And then when it tried, it ran into another issue, but it's able to recover from that. Now I'm going to run the ingestion process again with the new contextual retrieval implementation. Here's how the output is going to look like when you try to run this. So with every chunk, it's going to add a small summary. That's going to be the context followed by the original chunk. We have context, that is the summary, and then the original chunk here. So I ran the whole process for the 51 pages of the ORCA paper. It took a while because it has to process each and every individual chunk. But let's see how the retrieval looks like. Here is a retrieval for this question. How does Llama compares to or or Orca? Here's the answer that it generates. But if you look at each chunk that is using it in the context, you have the summary of the chunk based on the surrounding chunks and then the original chunk. So now I can create a PR, push it to local GPT, and we're going to have this new feature implemented. This was a quick tutorial on how to build software with agent development environments. And I think it shows that now you can work as an architect and a group of agents will be able to implement your code base. And this is a new paradigm in software building. You can get started for free with Warp. It gives you 150 AI requests per month. You can also upgrade to the paid version, which I highly recommend. Anyways, do check them out. Link is going to be in the video description. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.